Hey everybody, it's Party Elite. Welcome you back to another episode of our Planet Zoo Franchise Mode Let's Play. We're gonna dive right back into Elite Zoo North and get a lot done today. Though it is actually nighttime right now, so we're going to flip it to daytime and dive right into a time lapse, more or less immediately. Uh, just maybe a couple minutes of things to do first, and then we're gonna dive into a time lapse and uh, get something new and fresh going. Even though I don't think the uh, thirst bug has been fixed yet, uh, I'm going to work around that. Got some excellent suggestions in the comments of the previous episode that I feel match a bit better with the idea of, uh, you know, of a real zoo rather than just putting animals in a trade center and expecting them to get fed. A anyway, I'll, I'll give you details on that later. One thing I do want to mention though, folks, is that if you've been enjoying this series and you'd like to see it continue, please don't hesitate to let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. That is especially important right now uh, because I noticed last session that the, uh, the all the numbers were really far down. And uh, I think what's going on right now is YouTube is doing a very bad job of sending out notifications and stuff for my channel. I've seen quite a few people comment that, oh, I thought Party Elite stopped posting because I didn't get any notifications or anything like that. So uh, if you leave a like and a comment, it lets me know with more certainty you know how many people are still watching how many people are still interested and it allows me to make those important decisions now don't take this to mean anything like oh the show's almost over folks it's nothing like that the show will go on there's still so many of us still very much attached i'm still having fun i still want to play but just so i understand uh you know from like a from like a pragmatic perspective of like, okay, what people are interested in, it's just really helpful. Now, on top of that, I would also mention that if you're not a subscriber and you're still watching, uh, feel free to consider subscribing. I know many people don't subscribe for various reasons and that's perfectly cool. Uh, but if you've you know if you've been enjoying and you'd like to subscribe, then uh, now's a great time to do so. And if you are a subscriber, make sure you hit that little bell button next to the subscribe button so you actually get notifications. Um, but yeah, sorry, I, 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 hopefully that didn't sound too like negative or anything. It's, I'm not trying to imply that I'm worried or you should be worried about uh, the continuation of Planet Zoo, so please don't feel that way. I just wanted to get it out there because uh, I noticed that, and I was like, oh, I wonder what the situation is. I wonder how people feel. I wanted to get a, uh, uh, what's it called, a, a temperature check, basically, on how y'all are feeling. Because um, I'm still having a great time. <laughs> I still want to see Elite Zoo North uh, you know, completed. I want to you know, complete uh, the areas that we've been working on i want to work on africa and south america as well uh and i do want to it is a franchise and i've got some ideas from y'all in the comments about what to do with our next franchise zoo uh but that's all talk of the future let's talk about the present right now or perhaps a little bit about the past uh oh my god they're so cute <laughs> this is not why i came down here but i mean you know if they're going to if they're going to sit here looking pretty then i will give them the time of day oh look at look at those eyes Look at those ears. Oh, my God. So adorable. And these guys just kind of staring into the black abyss. Anyway, uh, well, the reason why I came down here is because many of you noticed something that I did not. As another excellent reason to leave comments because you do me massive favors, not only in letting me know and pointing out things that I've missed, such as this gap over here, but also in uh, giving me some joy in being able to read through your comments. I do enjoy reading through comments, folks, and I do it all the time. I read them all. Uh, even if you're posting, even if this episode is months old and you're posting a comment right now, first of all, hello, hope you're enjoying. Second of all, I will read your comment. I do it. Uh, the way notifications are received on YouTube, it, it, it just works out. So that's one thing we needed to fix. Uh, then I also wanted to get, uh, what was it? Sorry, just taking a look at my notes over here. Right, I wanted to get, again, just a couple of things before we dive into our time lapse, but I definitely want to do our time lapse sooner rather than later. And you know what? Let's go ahead and get the sun up. And my one concern is the rain, actually, now that I think about it. Hopefully the rain's not too bad when the sun is up. So let's go ahead and set our custom hour, make it noon. Oh, is that really how bright it's going to be? Oh, that's not too bad. Checking on my second monitor. A little gloomy. All right, we'll, we'll sort that out. Anyway, um, the first thing I want to do, again, just a couple things before the time lapse. So one of those couple things is over here. I got some excellent suggestions. For one, this should perhaps be in a group and then it should perhaps be in right up over here why was i looking down here for the color <laughs> in red is what i'm trying to say oh it looks like we've missed one fair enough not the end of the world did we miss one hang on now oh 
Seems we've got an extra over here. Go ahead and get rid of you. And let's get you back into position. There we go. The red pandemonium. And apart from that, you know, before I transported it to daytime, I should have... My... God, it's going to be one of those days, isn't it? <laughs> uh, let's go. Well, it, was, it wasn't morning anyway, so it's not like we would have been able to see the lighting. Set it to 2 o'clock in the morning because I want to get the lighting over here done as well. Again, it's not going to take us very long, and I just want to ease us into that time lapse because I've got huge plans uh, for the animal that we're adding today. And again, I imagine that the title and or thumbnail have either each or individually or both given away what the... Um, what the new edition is going to be today. I'm really excited because I've, I've had plans for a while. Uh, I didn't know exactly what it was going to be, but I had some, you know, idea of like what I might want it to be. And then the other day, and I think I mentioned this um, recently, but the other day I, it just kind of came to me. I was like, oh, you know, this would be really fun. And it's, it's based off of, I'm fairly certain it's based off of a suggestion I got in the comments a long time ago, like back in December or something. Um, but uh, it's, it's fun to, uh, to finally be able to execute on something that I've been plotting for a while. I finally kind of had the vision of like how I want it to be executed. Hopefully I'll like it. Hope I, I hope I haven't like hyped up something that is, you know, boring. <laughs> that would be unfortunate. There we go. There's a lighting over here. Needed that done. And apart from that, uh, I also needed to write. We'll probably get the name for this uh, done later, like the, the decorative version of it. But I do want to get the name down in, like, mechanically speaking. And... By a massive margin, the winner is the Red Keep. A massive margin. And I actually got a nice suggestion that pairs uh, that with the pandas. And uh, I mean, maybe I'll throw another vote out. Actually, you know what? Y'all in the comments, let me know your panda uh, enclosure name ideas again. Uh, and I'll collect them from this episode's comments and from prior episode's comments. And I'll throw a vote up next session. Uh, including the one that I got uh, last session that kind of matches and plays off of, of the Red Keep. So, um, so yeah, y'all let me know in the comments. So we'll do that. And then apart from that, I think it's time to uh, dive into our time lapse. Let's go for it. Let's go ahead and get our, hopefully, oh, you know what? The number of times I've changed the time of day to day. Oh, okay, beautiful. It worked. We're good. We're good. No crash. Oh, and now this is looking a lot better. That is looking a lot better. Okay, no, there we go. It's graying down again. That's too bad. I wish it wasn't raining, but I don't want to unpause for too long and have the uh, animals go thirsty and dying. Again, they're all thirsty right now. One of the suggestions was that I might have actually made a bit of a mistake, which, uh, oof. I can lie to you, that makes me feel really bad, but I might have made a bit of a mistake in that I've given the rhinos the wrong thing to drink water from. Nope, they can drink from the water pipe just like any other animal. Because apparently I had RE written here. So good spot, really good eye. Uh, but yeah, water pipe, same water pipe. Rhinos can drink from it. They're just, for some reason, they're not. So we have to be wary of our unpausing. And I will use what some of you suggested, uh, the vets. If you call a vet, the vet will come over, take the animal, and uh, take them to the vet clinic, and then take care of them there, uh, and feed them and, and, and water them, if you will. But the problem is that we... Uh, we didn't really prepare for a disaster like we have on our hands right now. If I go to staff facilities, oh, where can I see staff buildings? There we go. Um, not even that, actually. I kind of need to, like, move an animal. Let's go to our animal storage over here. That's the best way to... We also need to take a look at trading out some of these animals, but I'll, I'll, I'll do that uh, I'll do that after the time lapse. Yeah, you'll see our vet clinics. We've got... Um, We've got the uh, quarantine back there and up over here. Where is our... Yeah, I mean, I don't know about this. I don't know the time it takes to go and pick up the animal. I don't know. A little worried. But we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. We'll cross that bridge when we get there right now. Jeez, it really is really dark. Okay, folks, we need to unpause. Sorry, it's, it's really gloomy, and, and I don't want y'all to watch when it's so garbage looking. So let's figure this out right now. Let's figure this out right now. We've got Advik is thirsty. Lots of animals that are thirsty, but Shreya is severely dehydrated. So that's a big one. Right, we're going to go ahead and call a vet. And we're going to unpause. And we're going to hope it works. 
I can also just pick her up and move her. Honestly, it's tempting. Habitat cleanliness is a risk. Some of y'all were also pointing out that apparently with the, uh, with the new update, animals fighting isn't often pointed out. That's a big problem, too. Where are our rhinos? There you are. Where's our vet coming here? Vet en route? Where are you at? Oh, okay. Actually, pretty close. Where are you now? There we are. Okay, cool. That's good. That's good. And how are our other animals doing? Yeah, it's just raining way too much. Lots of animals are thirsty. We really dehydrated. Come on, come on, come on. Is our vet coming? Or did they just leave? I think they just left. Okay. Well, we're going to have to um, take this matter into our own hands. Again, I was hoping to make this, you know, real or believable or whatever you want to call it. But desperate times call for desperate measures. Uh, let's go ahead and move you over to quarantine, I suppose, should do the trick as well. Let's find out. Let's find out. Let's keep an eye on Shreya here. Again, she's pregnant, right? Like how, I mean, I couldn't, I wouldn't. Oh. Okay. Okay, hydration has been solved. I'm not sure exactly how, but we cancel that move then. Dangerous animal has escaped. Oh, hello. <laughs> wow, for once they've decided to do what they please here. <laughs> I'm surprised it took so long, actually. Go ahead and move you, please. I said, let's go ahead and move you, please. There we go. Get you in there. Unable to be moved. Why is that? This is interesting. No one's scared. I don't think they count as escaped right now because they're within their uh, enclosure. That's kind of weird. Advik is really dehydrated. Okay, let's pause again. I really need to keep an eye on this. Advik, we're going to move you to quarantine. Got one up over here. Relatively close. All right, come on. Sorry, folks. I, I want to do the time lapse at the beginning, but uh, I don't want it to be so like low quality weather when we do it. I don't think that makes for a fun viewing experience. And I mean, y'all let me know if you agree or not, so I know for future reference. But if I'm going to be unpausing so the weather gets better, I need to also ensure that our animals don't all die because uh, that would be a problem. Now, is your hydration going to fix like uh, the other ones did? No? Okay, just in case. Well, we do have the drinking spot over here. So it needs to be filled, if I'm not mistaken. It does. So let's go ahead and get the water pipe. Is the Indian elephant is able to drink from the water pipe as well. Yes, let's go ahead and put you down over here. Again, I don't want to just put a hundred water pipes down throughout the entire uh, zoo, right? Because then we have to go and clean that up afterwards. Come on, come on, have a drink, have a drink. Go, go out there, go. It's right there. Come on. There we go. There we go, who's a good boy? Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Looks like they're being moved instead. Fair enough. Yardley's about to die of old age. I'm fine with old age. Advik is being taken. Dangerous animal has escaped. Are you... No, there we go. You have escaped. Good. At least I was able to, you know, capture him. Alright, so let's keep an eye on Advik over here to see what happens. Some of the thirst is going away. I think some of the tortoises are finally arriving at their water pipes. So that's helping. Um, but, uh... Yeah, I'm still in uh, in shock, if you will, about how that went down. But it's okay. It's okay. We're it seems like we're recovering now, so that's good. Water treatment requires repair. Well, let's get on it then. No time to waste. I'm just gonna keep an eye on Advik over here. Flamingo Park is having some issues. Yardley has passed away, unfortunately. Old age, though, so you know that's uh, that's okay. That's okay. Um, Advik, where are you? There you are. There we go, being brought over. I, I'm guessing that in the box, they don't, um, their hydration doesn't matter and stuff. So let's go ahead and see what happens here. So you're going to be brought over to quarantine, and I suspect you will be fed and watered, as I said earlier, in quarantine, right? I should hope. Advik, animal is thirsty. Give me more details. Where are you, Advik? Oh, my name. <laughs> Five. I'm going to keep Five's name as it is, by the way. I, I don't think I can, um give up on the Red 5 joke. I'm too much of a Star Wars fan. I, I, I'm i sorry. <laughs> um, let's see. Welfare is kind of low under quarantine. I think they're still thirsty. 
I think you're still thirsty. Okay. I mean, I don't want to put you in the trade center, but that's the only other option I've got. What about at the center of our zoo? Don't we have, um... Oh, yeah, just the trade center. Hmm. It just says thirsty, though. Not, uh... Not severely dehydrated. Ugh. Okay, let's let's just do this. Let's go ahead into the trade center. Like going against my principles, it does bother me a fair bit. But let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and do this. Get it done. Sun's up, but I want to make sure I get uh, Advik back where he needs to be before um before we uh, forget or anything like that. Okay, Advik is done. Go ahead and move you over to the Ivory Palace. Okay, now hopefully, again, we're going to unpause because I want to keep an eye on uh, on the animal. Cushy is thirsty. Well, okay, hopefully you're going to be able to drink, right? I can't keep doing this to every animal. Offspring due soon as well. Just come. It's right here. It's right here. Advik is still thirsty as well. Yeah, dehydrated. Being in the... Uh, Trade Center did not seem to help. Okay, well, let's keep him in the box, at least for now. And no one is severely dehydrated, so that's good. Also, the sun is up, the rain has stopped. I think it's time to uh, go ahead with our time lapse. Uh, again, y'all let me know if in the future I should or should not wait for um, the rain to stop. I personally thought it looked a little too gloomy for what we were about to do. Uh, can you imagine staring at that for 20 minutes straight? And uh, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's better to have the sun up. Folks, no more time to waste. As promised, the time lapse near the beginning of this session. Let's do it. All right, I'm pretty happy with the end result of this time lapse. Um, but before we get to it, of course, I have to distract myself with a bit of art that needs to be created over here. Art, art's a strong word. I should not call it art. Uh, I have to build a sign for the, uh, the red keep. Uh, wow, that name was really popular. I liked all three that I put up for uh, for vote. Uh, anytime I put them up for vote, it's because I have a really, really, really hard time picking and they're basically on equal footing for me. Um, but it was like, I forget now, it was, it was like 70% or something wanted, uh, wanted the red keep, which uh, now I'm curious about everyone's opinion about season eight. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm uh, very happy with the name. And we're also, I think I mentioned it either before or after this time lapse, but we're also keeping... Five's name is Five because I just I love Star Wars too much and I can't I can't uh, what a coincidence that that should happen right what a coincidence anyway onwards with the actual main topic of this time lapse we are going to give the doll sheep a home in our zoo uh, now one thing about the doll sheep is that from my understanding I could be wrong but from my understanding they really like you know, climbing. Cl I'm, I'm having a hard time saying the word climbing only because when I think climb, I think like the, uh, like the orangutan, for example, how they climb. But the doll sheep like a little bit of verticality, you know, mountainside, um, climbing up and down ridges and things like that. So I wanted to really kind of take that and amplify it as far as I, well, not as far as I could, but as far as I re could reasonably amplify it. So I wanted to create uh, this low access point for the uh for the guests and from that low access point i also wanted to add a vertical height to the enclosure itself and that way when a guest comes through a you know it, it's it's a tall um it's a tall landmark but it feels even taller from the viewpoint of the guest because they are dug deeper into the ground uh so you know just kind of using that to force that feeling of height um, but overall, yeah, just trying to build this like really tall uh, vertical enclosure, which is not something we've really done before. We've done climbing platforms, we've done the treehouse, we've done things like that, sure. But nothing, nothing to this scale or to this effect where the verticality is the selling point of the enclosure as a whole. And I'm, I'm really happy with how it ends up. And once we get the uh, sheep in, I'm really happy with kind of how they interact with the space as well. And I'm curious to see how guests feel about it as they come through, like... I want a bigger sample size of guests than what I get today uh, to be able to tell if this was successful or not. 
Uh, but yeah, you can see again, trying to make it a little intricate, making a cave network basically, so that the sheep can uh, rest in multiple spots. Uh, so we just put one of our caves down. I'm about to put another one down as well. And all at the same time, just making sure that the terrain is actually, you know, uh, usable, like uh, traversable rather, sorry. Uh, building another main cave down over here where I'm just hoping most of the time will be spent. And we're also going to have like feeding and drinking lower down so that guests have a more, um, on average, guests have a better view of the animal. And every once in a while, the animal is just going to, you know, go wherever it wants to, climb a little bit, have some fun uh, at a greater height. Uh, I was kind of toying with the idea of building a skylight into the uh, the antechamber for the Aurora Borealis, uh, but it wasn't really working nicely. It wasn't really looking that good, so I decided against it. A big part of it's because of how the terrain up top there is still interacting with the pathing below it, and so it's not letting me carve properly. So I decided against it. Like, why overcomplicate the matter? We've already got something interesting going. And you can see the view from the... Uh, uh, from the workshop as well is quite impressive. I'm hoping, you know what, I I do put some trees and stuff down and I didn't put too many down because I didn't want to block the view from the, uh, the workshop. However, in hindsight, I feel like guests will be like, oh, I can barely see the sheep from over here. I'm really upset. What do you mean there's an actual spot I should go to see them? What do you mean I shouldn't be looking at them from this place that is not designated for them and should be very obvious because there's no education boards or speakers talking about the animal that's way off in the distance? No, I'm not going to go there. I'm going to complain about it instead, say the guests. Um, so I might put some more trees down, is what I'm getting at. <laughs> anyway, I had, to, I had to adjust my little uh, barrier over here because I completely forgot <laughs> the mechanics of... Uh, of, uh, of adding a habitat gate and stuff. So you'll see me struggling a little bit with the uh, null barriers and making sure that it all lines up nicely. Don't worry, we sort it out though. We don't take forever to do it. No, it certainly felt like it. Uh, there we go. So yeah, I took an alternate path and that should allow the guests to come in and explore and the sheep to uh, run around freely uh, with a small bit of space that they're not allowed to use. Kind of wish that I could have a complete 360 loop and I probably could do, but it just introduces more uh, points of potential complication, so I, I avoided that. And you can see here now we're finally adding in the uh, the keeper gate. Now, based on what I've seen, the keeper should have access to all the important parts of the um, enclosure that we're building. Uh, I've, I've smoothed the terrain out enough. I've got the ramps about the right height and stuff, so we should be fine. But we'll keep an eye out and see if if there are actually any issues. Uh, but I do try to keep all the important things that the keeper needs to use. Uh, I do try to keep those uh, lower down in the lower levels. The only issue will be if an animal decides to take a crap further up top, a keeper's gonna have to make his way up there and hopefully they don't have vertigo. Um, but yeah, you can see adding the food trays, we're gonna add some water pipes as well, getting all that done and uh, just keeping all that stuff low so that guests, when they come through, they'll have a great view. They can either look down at them eating or they can look up at them slightly eating. Uh, the drinking happens a little bit higher because I felt like I want to have both of those types of views, low and high, and that was a good way to encourage it. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see how guests feel about the space and how they interact with the space. I personally think it's a pretty neat idea. It's not as wild as some of our ideas. Like This isn't like Bagraba where we have a tiger sculpture this isn't um uh you know it's not a, a massive palace temple type construct uh it's nothing like that sure but it is in my opinion complicated in its own way uh you know, intricate cave network it would work great for um wolves and stuff as well because again cave networks right but uh, i just thought it'd be fun to see it with the uh, with the sheep uh, and I hope you all agree. And if you don't, feel free to let me know. But let me know by leaving a comment, of course. And if you missed me mentioning it earlier, then uh, please don't hesitate to uh, leave a like and a comment down below if you've been enjoying this series. Uh, I feel like it's like the 20th time I've mentioned that today, so my apologies if that is the case. But yeah, next stage is just kind of getting the rocks in place, uh, trying to make the terrain look a bit uh, better, trying to make it meld a bit better. Uh, and you're just going to go around placing some rocks. And you know what? I will leave you with this beautiful classical music as I do so. Because uh, there's no point for me to just ramble about putting rocks down. And painting the train rock colored.
course, we got to get some uh, food spots down as well as uh, a bunch of trash cans because, well, we know why. We know who the real animals are in this zoo. And yeah, a couple picnic benches. I feel like it'd be a nice spot to kind of chill and eat and watch the sheep run around around you. I don't know. If, if, if I went to a zoo with this kind of a spot, if there was a zoo like this near my house, and I wasn't required to stay at home right now, I'd check it out. That is a pretty cool uh, spot. We'll see if it gets use. I mean, I've seen picnic benches typically not get too much use outside of really high traffic areas. And so I feel like we're not going to see too many people sitting down over here. I, I just, I really do just hope that people actually come over here now that we've introduced another animal. Worst case scenario, I might need to build this back into a loop. Uh, and in as a part of that loop, have the uh, reindeer be a part of the experience, or perhaps force the Arctic wolves be, uh, to be a part of the uh, of this loop's experience. I guess I gotta figure it out because I, I would like guests to come up here. It's not the end of the world if they don't, obviously, but it doesn't feel good, obviously, uh, either when you've uh, gone through the effort, built something like this, and guests don't come through. Meanwhile, like the orangutan enclosure, so much effort, but. Every time I see guests walking through the tunnel or whatever, 100% feels justified. So uh, we'll see. We'll see. Anyways, folks, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we're just going to duplicate a couple more trees over. Uh, and that will be the end of this time lapse. So nothing too wild, but still, I, I, I like the idea. I like the uh, natural, like the, the fact that it's more of a natural build rather than something too, uh, uh, you know, man-made, so to speak, or anything like that. Oh yeah, pretty uh, pretty happy with it. Oh yeah, of course, right. I decided to put down another source of power as well. And some security cameras and stuff. Yeah, just some minor stuff here and there. But uh, that, that's pretty much it. That's the, 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 the bulk of the enclosure is done. And again, I'm, I, I hope you all like it. If you do or if you don't, let me know. If you've got a name suggestion for it, let me know. And there are some food stalls as well that I'll mention after the time lapse. And uh, I'm obviously looking for your name suggestions for those as well. But folks, this is where we're going to call it. A time lapse back to regular speed. All right, folks, we are back from the time lapse and uh, I would say that was, you know, pretty good, pretty good. I'm excited to get the animals in here and see how they actually interact with the space. Uh, brings a lot of life to this area. I think this, uh, this, this construct, let's call it, adding some trees finally. And what we're gonna do is uh, when we finally add the reindeers, we're gonna add them in this little space over here. I call it little, but that's obviously a misnomer. I might put them over here. I might put them over here. It depends on how, you know, actually, let's take a look. How much space do the reindeer need? I love the search function. I'm so glad they finally added it. Uh, 370 meters square, but hold on a second. Sorry, I should check also uh, what is their size, three to 12. So I might change the shape of the river a little bit and then put the reindeer right up against the uh, workshop. That way they're able to, uh, they're more easily seen. I might try to make like a bridge so they can cross from one side of the river to the other, build their little, uh, well, I don't want to, I don't want to say what the plans are for them, uh, but I do have some plans for them. So there, 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 there's uh, room here to play for the reindeers. And then we're going to maybe do the Arctic uh, wolves like up over here or perhaps even over here and then get the Siberian tiger. The suggestion was to fill this gap with a Siberian tiger. I've seen that a couple times and I think that's maybe a solid, reasonable suggestion. Um, so we'll see. Or, or maybe the uh, Arctic uh, wolves go here and the Siberian tigers go up there. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. There's definitely lots of room to play here still. Uh, but for now, let's stay focused on our beautiful sheep and uh, see if we can't get some snuck in here before uh, animals start going thirsty again. I'm really hoping, so uh, we will do another pass, like a beauty pass, um, but I am, in many ways, I kind of like how uh, rough around the edges this one looks. Like the, the things that I want to do is like add more uh, of these like rocks and whatnot and get them looking a bit more uh, nicely integrated. That's the kind of stuff that I'd want to do with a uh, with another uh, time lapse with a uh, beauty pass on this area. And of course getting the name in and things like that. But overall I actually really like how natural it looks. It's a good return to our uh, natural aesthetic as well that we've done a couple of times recently. But really we've, we, we haven't done this uh, wildly in a while I would say. Uh, and I just realized I would like to make this work a little bit more nicely here. But again, maybe that's something that we save 
with a beauty pass. Now we could do something like that. Hmm. Hmm. None too happy about that. We'll we'll figure it out. I might need to pull this barrier over a little bit further as well, and maybe hide it into some of the terrain or something. Uh, over here, it's a little bit better, of course, but still, I mean, there is always room for improvement. That's just my mo when it comes to to time lapses and and enclosures and all that. Yeah, I think that's looking a bit better. I believe I can't sculpt around it, right? Yeah, no, it'll do that, which is obviously not acceptable. Um, actually, I, I want to really quickly mention, I've seen it asked, so I just want to really quickly mention that if you go to settings, you go to camera, and you turn off um, uh, disable camera, or sorry, if you enable disable camera collision with terrain, uh, that's why I'm able to uh, go through the terrain so easily without any issues. Uh, I've seen quite a few of you ask how I can, uh, how I do that. It's because I have that setting enabled. I've enabled the disabling, which is why I can do it. Anyway, sorry. I saw I mentioned a couple times and I, I replied to the comment, but I thought I'd also mention it um, in, in video for those of you that are wondering. Anyway, um, yeah, so I'm pretty happy with this. I like the, the viewing angle. I think it could be quite interesting. Uh, and, and it's extra dug down so that the height is extra exaggerated and i hope it's a nice 360 view of a bunch of them you know maybe some chilling over here maybe some over here uh this is where all the eating and drinking is going to happen eating over here drinking atop there and here so you know when it comes time for feeding and stuff at least it's clear views uh but i did want to check to see if the uh, sheep are actually able to interact with this space and how guests feel about it before i went too far like i might need to actually uh pull some of these further out like do something like this for example uh, and prevent them from hiding too far into the cave, but that's something that I want to experiment with. I like the feeling of it right now. I might also add some more, you know, sculptural details and stuff here and there. But anyway, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure I talked about it during the time lapse. I just want to touch on it because I am uh, wondering what I want to do next. Um, it needs a bit more detail, uh, and I want to throw it out there, obviously, to see what y'all think as well. Obviously, as always. Uh, I look to you for feedback. Now, over to animal trading. Uh, I'll mention again really quickly, if you don't already all, uh, words, if you don't already follow me on Twitter, then the link to my Twitter is in the uh, description down below. And uh, the reason why I mention it is because I kind of brought it up last session and many of you liked the idea, so I think we are going to go forward with it. But anytime I'm planning on trading animals out, I'll put an announcement um, on, on, on Twitter. I'll tweet it out. But it's it's going to be very last minute because I kind of go with the flow with this session. So it won't be like I'll, I'll have a plan. If I do have a plan for when to uh, when I'll be buying or rather selling animals, uh, I'll, uh, I'll let you all know ahead of time. But if I don't have a plan, then it'll kind of be a last minute. Hey, guys, selling animals right now. And then you'll have like an hour to hopefully see the tweet and pick up the... Uh, Pick up the animals that you want. Let's go ahead and pick this one up. Simmington. Another Simmington from Animal World here. 1575 is not bad. Of course, we're going to send you to quarantine first. We have one that is near-ish. I do wonder if I shouldn't get more staff facilities up over here. This isn't too far away, but... Could always use more. And again, now that with decorations, we've got um, the reduced negative impact area. I mean you'll see the negative impact area for these is just like, it's nothing. It's completely irrelevant at this point. The generator's got a big one, but the actual um, uh, staff facilities have nothing. You know what, why, why not? Why not? Why not? Got Simmington, and let's go ahead and find ourselves a uh, female doll sheep as well, and then we'll go ahead with, uh, with setting that up. Waynette, not terrible. Zayar, Zayer. Mm, wow, <laughs> none available. Great. What? Okay, this can't be true. There we go. All right, I guess we could go with uh, Waynet over here. Better genes than Udele. Both from Frontier Zoo. So, you know, again, it's a it's a developer-provided animal. Let's go ahead and get you from uh, from here. Waynet. Decent genes. Not the best, but they're decent. All right. So with that done, let's go ahead and get our... Uh, Facility setup. Just gonna add a couple more. Uh, what do we want to do? We want to go ahead over here. Go ahead and give ourselves. We could do a couple things. Um, we could do. 
a trade center. So we've got vet surgery. You know what? Let's go ahead and add a vet surgery over here. That's this is where I again I thought we had I could have sworn we had a vet surgery already, but I guess I didn't. I must have one. I, you, you have to have one at the beginning, otherwise it keeps prompting you. So we have one somewhere. This is where ideally the vets would have taken the animals to get them looked after. But uh, that's not what happened. So, you know, that's fun. Let's go ahead and put you down over here. Whoops. And let's go ahead and get our... I want to, again, make sure that I don't encroach too much into this space, right? I think that's actually too far. Let's Let's pull back down to here. Get you up over here. Hopefully we can hook the path up. But let's go ahead and get you down over here. Then we want to get our staff room up over here, I think. This is where the entrance is, right? Yep. Staff room. One of the windows is blocked over there, but that's okay. Actually, hold on. Isn't that a staff room? That is a staff room. We already got a staff room up over here. Uh, so we don't need a staff room. We need a trade center. Just this. Well, there's only one size. All right, let's get the trade center over here. And let's get our quarantine, which can also be a small quarantine. Over here. Cool. And if we take a look at negative impact, you'll see these are quite large. But again, they're out of the way, so it doesn't really matter right now. What I want to do is I want to just do that in, 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 during a beauty pass. Because I, I want to I wanna get the animals in. right? I want to make sure we don't run out of time. And energy. And patience in dealing with not only the paths, but also the, uh, the thirst. There we go. There we go. And let's hook you up. I just want I saw a connection up to... Oh. Oh. Come on now. Come on now. Close. It's so weird. If I reduce the length, it'll give me some more control, though. I don't think I can connect to this. I can. Okay, good. Let's go ahead and do that, then. And then where is our connection to... You. Where's the door on this one? Oh, have I tucked it away? I think I have. Indeed, I have. Okay. I rotated it one too many times. All right, let's go ahead and fix that. Nice and easy, obviously. There we go. Instant connection, and let's get our work zone done. So I've already added a new enclosure to the work zone. I did that during the time lapse, but uh, I'm trying to make a habit out of it. <laughs> it's all in there. But let's go ahead and get these guys in here as well. All right, great, awesome, cool. So now, now, we'll cover it up later. I want to get the animal in. I want to get the animal in. So let's look at our trade animal storage and the Simington. Let's move you over to quarantine and we also have of course a way net we're gonna move you over to quarantine as well so now for the next little while we're gonna have to keep our eyes peeled on the animal warnings gonna unpause gonna see who's not just thirsty but you know absolutely dehydrated and we'll uh we'll we'll, we'll have them covered all right we are unpaused let's go ahead and see if anything pops up I'm not even letting myself get distracted by all the people I can say hello to for the extra conservation credits. We don't need conservation credits as much as I need these animals to live happily without any concerns or fears or worries. With only joy in their hearts and minds. A little bit of thirst on Cushy over here. Low welfare with Odvik still. Been in a box for too long. Why are y'all in a box? Unbox all animals. Wonder if we got donations while that was happening. Nope. You're thirsty as well. Gotta get you, uh... So I, I think what happened is the way they approach uh, bodies of water has changed. And so the, um... The animals don't recognize that they can reach it anymore. Now, I really sincerely hope that they change it back to what it was. Because while I'm okay with a little bit of, you know, tweaking and whatnot, I'm worried that this tweak over here, if they don't revert it to what it was, then a lot of our enclosures are going to break. And that's a problem. Now, it looks like some of our animals are finally drinking, so that's at least a little reassuring. Makes me feel a lot better, actually, just, <laughs> just to know that it's not going to be an ongoing problem. Our rhinos, actually, what we can do for our rhinos is we should be able to give them uh, better quality food now. 
Dangerous animal has escaped. That's okay. We'll deal with that in a second. Can't be that dangerous. How dangerous can it be, right? How dangerous could it possibly be? Oh, it's already... That's oh, the elephants. I'm talking about elephants. I want my rhinos. My rhinos. There we go. Food should be grade three. Give them some good food. Make them happy. Uh, yes, the animal did not escape. I knew it was a lie. Shreya is about to have offspring. I would love to watch this because let's remember whose offspring this is, right? It's not just Shreya. There is the other half. Oh, so cute. They're such adorable animals. Despite the hard shell and whatnot, it's a soft interior. <laughs> Come on now. Have that baby. Have that baby. The legacy of Viraj lives on. Any second now. That is a human baby I can hear crying. I've never actually seen these toys at a zoo. Quite curious if any of y'all have actually. Never seen something so big. Okay, hold on. Something is giving me an alert. Dangerous animal has escaped. Who? I guess, yeah, they've changed the pathing. There we go. Oh, yes. Look at that. The, uh... It's ironic that we should have an animal named Dia get born today. Right after last session where I was talking about Diwali. Because the little, like, lamps that you light for Diwali, they're called Dias. So, what are the chances of that happening? Alright, I mean, I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. I do like the uh, details we can see with the uh, genealogy and stuff as well. Viraj lives on. Viraj lives on. Not the best genetics with size and longevity, but it's okay. You know, we'll we'll, we'll make it work. And the thing is, Dia can actually, if we take a look, uh, well, we have to wait until she's an adult, but she'll be able to mate with um, the other male rhino we have. And hopefully having a baby rhino will draw some more crowds. Quarantine passed on both of our sheep, so that's good. Oh, let's actually take a look at some of these donations. It's it's June, so money should be flowing. Hopefully. Eh, a little bit of money here. We've got crowds, that's for sure. We've got crowds. Oh, yeah, I completely forgot. We've got, like, guest history and stuff now as well. Okay, why are you not having a good time? Well, we'll, we'll look at that more later. Let's go ahead and get these, uh, these animals in, shall we? Are we done? Oh... Wow. Hey guys, I, I I think the thirst problem is gone. Maybe the rain is helping, but the thirst problem is 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 gone, which feels good. All right, let's go ahead and move both of you over to Habitat Twenty One. And of course, folks, I will need your name suggestions. I'll need your name suggestions. Let's get these animals in there, and I want to see. Hopefully, people will start. Um, you know, moving around and, and actually exploring not just the uh, new enclosure, but also our, uh, our our polar bear enclosure. The the Aurora, Aurora <laughs> Borealis will get some more attention as well. That would be quite nice. And I believe, yeah, you've escaped again. Okay, so the issue over here is that I think as a result of the repathing and stuff, why does this count as an escape? This is a problem. This is a problem. Alright, let's let's see if there's not an easy solution to this. Hmm. This is a problem. Our barrier. Ah yeah, it's right on the line there. So suppose we could edit it. And we could add a step here and pull it out. Our snow leopard's about to have offspring, so that should prevent the escape from being counted. The one time, of course, we did have Buddy jump right down. That was a problem. I'm wondering how that happened. I guess there's the gap over here. They didn't used to consider that an escape route, but uh, times have changed, I guess. Times have changed. I'll deal with that later. I'll I'll, uh, I'll need to remember to deal with that later. But uh, I want to take a look and see. Our animals have arrived. 
And what's the deal here? Mechanic research complete. Power source requires repair. Fair enough. Let's get a mechanic there. The uh, the mechanic research. By the way, I should touch on this because many of you mentioned this. There, Yes, there is a lot. Oh, 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 yes. Oh my god, we're going to have baby red pandas. We're going to have baby red pandas. We're going to have baby red pandas. Oh, synchronized uh, standing over here. I felt judged the way they stood up together at the same time. They're just like, are you... Can you give us some privacy here? Offspring do. Oh, man. June or July. Either or. I'll take it. I'll take it. Oh, we're going to have baby red pandas. I'm so excited. <laughs> I hope they're actually like, you know, itty bitty and adorable. I'm so pumped. Um, but as I was saying, so yes, we do have a lot of mechanic research still... Um, up for grabs. The reason why I don't do it is because when you do research for a theme, the first three give you parts and blueprints. The last one just gives you blueprints. In fact, I think even the, I mean, okay, we can go ahead and get uh, Magenta Fairy. Let's get you researching the Arctic theme so we get the third one. Um, but there is, I mean, habitats, I guess we can research, but I'm not interested in blueprints and, and pre-built stuff, right? Which is why I'll leave my mechanics free to go around and, uh, and, uh, and, and do research. Oh, look at them run. No enrichment. I, I do have to fix that. But first, let's look at the habitat. They're able to get everywhere, including outside of their habitat. Wonderful. Okay, good, good, good. Oh, we're going to have to fix that, obviously. going to have to fix that, obviously. Let's go ahead and edit this barrier a little bit. Increase your height. Thank you very much. There we go. Also, just put some trees down. That's always nice, too. Preferably not sideways trees. My, f my least favorite kind of tree is a sideways tree. Dangerous animals escaped. Gee, I wonder who that is. Oh no, okay, that's a... They're sheep. They're not dangerous. Come on. Let's capture you. Alright, let's pause it for a second here. Because we've got to make sure that they're not able to just escape so easily. Wow, really snuck by me, eh? Alright. Do not align to surface. Cool. How did you... Wow, the thinnest of gaps. The thinnest of gaps. That was after I made my adjustments, too. But make sure this is completely blocked off. So this is good. I'm glad that they're able to navigate most of this terrain because uh, that's kind of the point here. The, the point is that I want them to explore um, and, and have that verticality. And this is, I think, the most vertical enclosure we've built. And it's because we have these animals that enjoy this kind of verticality. That's That was why I was so excited to, to share this one, because I felt it was quite unique. It's quite different from anything else we've done, uh, which I always like um, exploring. I like exploring, you know, kind of different, fresh ideas um, compared to what we've done prior. So I hope I hope the hype was worth it. Uh, I certainly think so. I certainly think it's um, it's an interesting uh, interesting enclosure. But what I need to figure out now, though, is how to ensure that these animals don't just waltz out. I'm thinking of using this curved modern glass piece to like create this kind of a thing. And I think it'll work, because I think it'll just jut out a little too much, and it'll make them uncomfortable, but time will tell, I suppose. Go ahead and do something like that. And let's duplicate you a little bit more, actually. There we go. But I will need... I'm going to adjust this again. We're gonna. This is why we're going to need to do a beauty pass. This is why I like getting the animal in and then uh, experimenting with it a bit more, because you never know... Um, well, sometimes you know, but but many times you never know. Many times you don't know how things are gonna work out. Yeah, that's not gonna that's not gonna work. We need something that's a bit more upright. I don't want to put a barrier down there. I guess I have to put like the proper like a proper uh, covering or something. Could do something like this. Oops, sorry. Could do something like this. I think where. I mean, the, the white looks nice because, you know, it fits into, like, the snowiness and things like that. And you can still see through it. That's that's a big thing for me. I want to make sure guests are able to see through uh, and actually see the animal if the animal walks atop the, uh, the glass. Though I don't think they will. I'm pretty sure it's too... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Pretty sure it's too steep for them, but I want to make sure if they do... And guests are able to see them. 
Which one did it? The four meter one, right? Yeah. Yep, that was the four meter one. So where's my four meter corner? There we go. Why are you not snapping perfectly? Because you're not the right piece, of course, because you're curved. Come on, party. Come on, party. <laughs> Simple geometry. Something I'm actually decent at, <laughs> if I'm paying attention. All right, there we go. Back to our four meter piece, and let's get you there. I think that should be good enough. I actually don't know. I think they might be able to escape from even further. But that's, you know, so now when you come in, you're able to look up and see the animal, but not have to worry about them jumping on your head. Literally. Literally. Now, where is... Where's the where's the one that didn't get out? Oh, is that... Yes. All right, Simmington. Let's... Fine. Let's get them some enrichment items first before I unpause again, because it's quite rude of me to not uh, give them something to play with. Rubbing pads are always fun. Get a rubbing pad down over here. No, no, no. <gasps> I'm like, prey scented sack? What? I didn't picture a sheep to be a carnivore. Right. Gotta actually search the right um, animal for that. Let's get the rubbing pillar then. Hmm. Where to put the rubbing pillar? I could put the rubbing pillar up over here. Sure, I'll, we'll, we'll clean that up after. And the uh, grab ball is always fun as well, though. Let's see if they even need it. No, they don't. All right, let's go ahead and give them some food enrichment. Now, the food enrichment, of course, needs to be filled. Let's make sure it's accessible. And let's put you down over here. Oh, I don't like that. I don't like the flattened terrain. I understand why it has to happen, but I don't want it to be the case. There, that's fine. That time, it's not so bad. Cool, let's nudge you. Actually, let's duplicate you so we can... Again, I'll be doing the blending and stuff in the future. Because what we can do is we can go in, use the terrain subtly to, like, get this kind of stuff going. Smooth it out a bit. But I want to see if the animals are having a good time. If they're able to explore and run around and have fun. We'll unpause that. Let's go ahead and check our... Habitat enrichment is maxed out. Yes, habitat is refreshing. Oh, still able to escape. <laughs> How? Why? Why did I not see this? How did I not see this? I guess I can't really just um, do that. I guess I have to put the barrier down. Fair enough. Not the end of the world. Pretty sure we're able to... Put this down here. Yeah, we are. Good stuff. I would like to move this over, though. Blends a bit more nicely. There we go. That'll hopefully do the trick. Hopefully. I <laughs> can't believe within seconds, both of our sheep escaped. Within, like, less than seconds. Syra is thirsty. Let's keep an eye on that. Our Komodo dragons are about to start maturing, and we have quite a few of them. Wonder what kind of... Oh, we're looking at some pretty good genes over here. Might release some into the wild. Might uh, trade some out. I think next session we'll do another big trade. Maybe. Again, it's not uh, confirmed yet or anything, but maybe. Maybe. Let me just check. I just love the I just love the fact that this exists. It's just so cool. Unknown origin, captive birth. Excuse me. Not an unknown origin. It's from Buddy and Enda. It's okay. It's okay. Maybe it'll fix itself. Maybe it'll sort itself out. Animal's thirsty. Animal's thirsty. I'm gonna keep an eye on that. But, for now, back to the doll sheep. I want to see them move around. I wish it wasn't so rainy and gloomy. Dangerous animals escaped again. Oh, dear. How did you get it? Of course. Gotta check when you have a baby, right? Gotta check when you have a baby. Gotta baby-proof the enclosure. Oh. This episode reminds me of the um, the peafowl episode, the one where we where we added the peafowl, and I was like, ah, it'll be fine if there's a couple of gaps. They're not gonna make their way out, and it was like watching Chicken Run, except with peafowl, Bollywood version of Chicken Run or something. Not that there aren't chickens in India, but habitat cleanliness is a disease risk. Which one is this? The Himalayan hideout. Have we not had a? Uh... 
one month ago a keeper came. I guess the baby bears just like pooping. Got plenty of... <sighs> They're so cute. Actually, you know what? Now that, now that things aren't so uh, apocalyptic, let's enjoy the presence of the baby bears a little bit, shall we? Didn't quite get to last time. They are so adorable. They're so cute. This is with the light on. This is as bright as I can make it. Their proportions are just excellent. Oh, oh. Whoa. What are you unhappy about? Oh, the food's here. You're, you're not unhappy at all. All right, can you also clean up, please? Come back in with a with a poop vacuum. Excuse me, you've literally been served on- Oh my god, that's horrifying. Okay, I'm gonna have nightmares. Please transform back. Please become normal. Please, don't be a permanent fixture in this zoo. Okay. That was terrifying, but I'm glad it fixed itself. Also, I love how these three just, like, went to the pile. You've literally been served on a platter. Oh, so cute. <laughs> the shape is just perfect. It's like, look at that from the top. It's... it's it's such a nice shape. <laughs> um, animals really- okay, you are not having a good time. How- where do I even move you? What do I do? How do I- how do I save you? How do I save you? I guess I could take him to, uh, or take her to, um... Yeah, see, we do have the, uh, vet, um... Spot, but I guess they- you, you can't move them to it. All right, let's take you to quarantine, I guess. The problem's been solved, but not, you know, perfectly. More thirstiness. Oh, I, I can't stand the idea of losing an elephant or a... or a tiger or something. Okay, let's take the habitat. He's still... Okay, they can escape from up there. They can escape down over here. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. I haven't blocked this off properly. That's, that's, that's easy to fix. That's easy to fix. We can just go ahead and do that. They really do like climbing, which is good. I was, uh, I was worried I'd, I'd misunderstood the animal or something, but, but it seems they, uh, they do enjoy this. Or at least they can do this. I don't know about enjoy. We'll see. Unpause for a second here. With this update. So that should be great. <laughs> we just made it easier for them to get out. Need to, I need to sort this out. Go ahead and block their exit. Hopefully that's what I'm doing here. And we'll make it look neater next session. Because right now I, I need to understand the mechanics of, of their uh, mobility. Of their, of their, of their escape artist nature. Alright. Lots of, lots of confidence in these animals. Not very sheepish at all. Not very sheepish at all. Alright. Let's check this out now. Unpausing again. And, alright, good. We've blocked this off. Excellent. They can still get out from up over there. But that's because of the shape of the habitat. So if we edit the barrier, and if I actually adjust this, we can add another step in here. And we can move you over a little bit. Like so. There we go. That should solve that problem. I think they're eating. No, they're... Oh, man, those are their hooves. Wow, they can really climb, eh? <gasps> Nothing's gonna stop them. Are you done being severely dehydrated? Okay, at least you've been boxed up. Getting really worried. I'm getting really worried. Right, let's 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 take a moment with our sheep over here, shall we? Let's hope that people actually come up this way. We have a new animal. No education boards or anything up yet, but just want to see where people congregate and things like that. There's some obvious spots to put the uh, put them down near yeah, the donation bins. I mean, the donation bins is where I suspect people will be standing. Look at that! Look at that! Like awkward climbing angle. 
and actually, you know what? I want to check as well. Can they go? Okay, good. They cannot go all the way to the top. Good. Very good. I do kind of want them to be able to go up there, though. For that, I guess I got to adjust this a little bit. I like pull this out a bit. Oh, you know what it is? It's these rocks. They're blocking the path that I've made. Dangerous animal has escaped. I presume it's the uh, sheep again. No, it's not. It is an orangutan again. It's not dangerous. Come on. It's adorable. What happened to this game with this update? It breaks my heart. These things that were working, these experiments that were successful have now been made unsuccessful. It's okay. Alright, cool. Now you can get up over here and you can get all the way up to over here. Excellent. That's exactly what I want. We'll have to adjust the barrier's shape a little bit and we have to uh, also make sure that... Um, don't, 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 don't make a beeline. Don't make a beeline. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Stop, stop, stop. Oh, terrain. Okay, good. I'm gonna beat the sheep. There we go. Just gonna push this in a little bit. The barrier's kind of holding it in place, alright. There we go. There we go, that should prevent that escape route. These alerts keep popping up and they make me very nervous. Syrah should be away. Syrah is no longer super thirsty. Okay, good. Hopefully not because she's passed away. Correct. Komodo dragons are overcrowded. Yes, those those warnings, unless I missed it. Yeah, those warnings don't show up here anymore either. I was warned in the comments. I should have kept an eye on that a bit more. Lots going on. Breed three new exhibit animals. Cool, thank you very much. I'll claim that reward. Lots going on in the zoo, but the uh, thing that interests me most is that guests have arrived. They are checking out Habitat 21. You're freezing out here. It's making your teeth chatter. Well, how about you have some of that uh, Street Fox coffee? Or, or Missy Good. By the way, I need name suggestions for these two. I might put a heater down over here, but nothing too hot. Actually, you know, let's go ahead and do that right now. I don't want it to be too hot over here because I want to see if we can't get people to, um, yeah, use the, uh, use the, the coffee place. Go ahead and make it, make it 8 degrees. A nice, a nice comfortable 8 degrees. Cool. Where's our sheep? Where are they? Oh, there's one. All right, cool. I was like, did you manage to escape somehow? Sorry, my camera controls are all over the place right now. All right, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the uh, with the enclosure as a whole. I'm pretty happy with the idea of it and the use of it. It's great to see that they're actually able to climb. And oh, it looks like you have a little teardrop. Look at that little spot over there. It looks like a little te teardrop. And it is symmetrical. Interesting. Um, but yeah, it, it's good to see the animals are able to navigate this space and use it as intended. Um, maybe a bit more than intended, in fact. Oh yeah, look at that run. You can act, you can hear the hooves, which is wild. That's really nice, actually. It's a nice touch. Does the uh, female also have the tear drop? I guess so. I guess that's just a, a common mark with the, uh, with these animals. Hmm. And the knees as well. Oh yes, drink water. Not something a lot of animals know how to do around these parts. Thirsty animals, no one is dehydrated. Cool. These caves are actually a lot bigger than uh, I thought they were. <laughs> these are huge. These are absolutely huge. And actually, I should check. We're good. Oh my god, 2.5 kilometers squared. It's because it counts the uh, verticality. That's why. And of course, more severe dehydration. I'm going to go ahead and pause it, folks. I'm going to go ahead and call it a session. Uh, these alerts keep popping up. And again, we can only hope that by the next session, this has been taken care of. Again, I imagine they're still on a holiday at the time of this recording. And it was the weekend and it was a long weekend as well. So all good, all good. Hopefully by the time we record next, it'll be taken care of. But I am glad that we were able to get the, uh, the doll sheep in. Something we've been talking about for quite a while. 
And uh, not only did we get them in, but I'm pretty happy with the overall theme and idea of the enclosure as well. And I hope, again, y'all are as well. But as always, let me know if you are or if you're not or if you have any thoughts of your own. Definitely some cleaning up that needs to be done over here, I would say. Uh, we need to make the barriers, well, we need to make it less escapable, so to speak. We also need to clean up some of the shapes and some of the issues, like the trees overlapping over here. That was a, a haphazard fix we don't need anymore. Um, but just want to make sure things blend nicely. And and yeah, don't mind the size, the reported size of the enclosure. I know I tend to make enclosures too big, but I did not, in fact, make these uh, these sheep a, uh, what, what did it say? 2.5 kilometer square enclosure. It's just because I think it's got all this land that they can uh, navigate vertically as well. That the game is like, hey, wow, you've given them so much space. Because it certainly doesn't feel like that much space. But hey, maybe I'm wrong. You know what that means though, right? We can have a lot of babies here and it's not going to be a problem. They're overall happy with everything except for the lady ferns, which I added because, I mean, they're they're okay with it. They're okay with it. Oh, adult population. They need, a, they need at least two more, I think. We could bring some more in. But for now, again, like I said, we're going to leave it off here, folks. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, you know what to do. You know exactly what to do. Let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. As always, it makes such a big difference in high-approach content on the channel. It lets me know what y'all are interested in. And again, just as a reminder, uh, if you haven't already subscribed, maybe consider subscribing. And if you are subscribed, or if you're just about to subscribe, consider hitting that bell button right next to the uh, subscribe button as well, because that way you can actually get notifications. Uh, but if you're not aware, I do have a pretty concrete schedule that I stick to. Uh, very rarely do I deviate from it. So uh, hopefully there's a bit of you know, like you kind of know when an episode's supposed to come out, hopefully. Anyway, folks, this is where we're calling it. As always, a massive thanks goes out to all of my channel members and patrons for supporting the channel on a monthly basis. You keep us alive and running smoothly. And a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Till next time. Cheers.